tirado aí. Mas vamos ver se. Hello, Andy. Hey, my friends, how are you? How are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Thank you. Are you listening okay? Yes, everything is okay. Okay, I will make a, a little introduce okay. introduction here for the people speak that speak English. Okay, and I I made for the Brazilian in Portuguese. Now I'm going to do for your friends alive. Okay, great. Well, uh, first, good evening to to all all our friends. We, we, we would like to thank the audience, and you are all welcome here. Uh, second, I would like to explain that we are we will be translating and putting subtitles on our YouTube channel, and we will try to summarize a few very objective questions to to know our guests' view on the subject. We will start a series of several international guests, and I have the honor to start with you, Andy Segos. Uh, a known breeder and international judge. Do you understand everything okay, Andy? Perfect. Sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> My English is good? It's good. And your music is very good, too. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. <laughs> well, first, I would like to congratulate you for your, on your, your work. It's, it's uh, something fantastic what you're doing. Lucio is today a reference for us. And we have a little bit here with the puppies. And we know uh, how fantastic is your work, you know. Brazil is a big country here, but we have a, a distance from for some information. And we, we will try to, to get close with these interviews, with these uh, guests we are, we are inviting to do this live, uh, live interview, you know. Okay. I, I send you some questions that we are going to talk here. It's uh, not too too large because we have to to make the subtitles and it's it's a uh, uh, a big word uh, uh, after that. And I will make you again for the people uh, watching, and then we can discuss. Okay. Okay. Let me remind here. Uh, okay, Andy, I, I would like to know your view about uh, the two different standards we have. We have the HBA, UKC, is two different words, different targets, different purposes, and we are, we are, we are watching different kind of clubs in all the world. You went to Italy, you saw that we have clubs going to the UKC standard, clubs going to the HBA, here in Brazil, we have this division too. Okay. I would like to know your vision. Uh, how you see this this kind of division? Sure. Um, well, I believe that both of the organizations are positive for the breed in general, as long as they're kept in their proper perspectives. I think that they're both looking for something a little bit different in the dogs that they register. Um, I do not think that one is necessarily better than the other. It really just comes down to personal preference and, um, you know, what you're drawn to. Um, I think both of the organizations in a perfect world would be better off if they worked together and did some co-promoting and had shows, AKC or UKC and ADBA together. And um, I think it would do better for the, the breed's public image um, for the way that you know, people who don't understand pit bulls um, in general would perceive the dogs. Um, that's my thing. Okay, but you see, uh, in USA, do do you know if there is a kind of movement movement to to a, a union of the this kind of uh, show UKC and ADBA going together to make a show? No, I don't think so. Not in the not in the USA. I've seen some clubs in Italy, more fun fun clubs, um, yeah. host, host large events together, and they've been very successful. But I don't think that we'll see it in the in the in the USA, at least not anytime soon, because um, there's a lot of ego, and and um, ADBA thinks they're the best, UKC thinks they're the best, and when you have 
two personalities that, um, you know, have blinders on for, for a better lack of words, it's hard to get them to come together. Um, you know, I, I think from what, my experience, the UKC dogs that I've seen seem to be more almost um, not American Staffordshire Terriers, but more towards that way, whereas some of the ADBA dogs, you know, are, are built a little different and they're looking for something a little bit different. Um, one thing I will say um, that might not be, um, you know, very popular with some people is that a lot of the, the ADBA dogs that I do see and have judged are, um, you know, in, in my opinion, American Staffordshire Terriers as well. Um, any dog that's, that's bred just for any pit bull that's bred just for looks and, and confirmation without any regard to athletic performance in my opinion, is an American Staffordshire Terrier, regardless of what the, mm -hmm. the registry papers say. Um, okay. Okay, Andy, let's go to the second question. Uh, as we know, the traditional sport uh, is forbidden, you know, uh, even in USA, Brazil, uh, many countries. Uh, how do you see the al alternative sports? like top dog, wall climb, hang time. Yep. Do, do you think we, we could uh, do a, a good selection with that? Uh, do you think it could change the, the standard? What, what do you think about that? Uh, my opinion on that is I think that all sports for all dogs are, are wonderful. I think that um, for the American Pitbull Terrier, it's imperative that they maintain a working um, breed and athleticism is paramount. So um, while this isn't the, the um, wall climb and treadmill races, they aren't what the breed was bred for originally. Um, in this day and time, we've got to adapt. Um, top dog is, is, is something that I have fun with. It's, it's more um, exciting than confirmation. And um, I, think, um, I think it would be really interesting to see um, a lot of the top-ranked ADBA dogs actually competing in top dog. They don't today. Um, there's one dog that dominates top dog that's in the top rankings of, for confirmation as well, and that's Lucho. The rest of the top-ranked confirmation dogs don't, don't uh, do top dog. Why? And how, how the breeders see the top dog in USA? They are excited with that? You know, it takes some training to, to teach a dog to climb the wall and to run sprints and the various other activities. And a lot of people are lazy and they don't want to train their dog. They'd rather stand in the, in the ring with the leash, look pretty, that's easy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a lot harder to teach the dog and train the dog every day and, and, and get peak performance out of them. So um, they complain a lot. They say, oh, the, the scoring is, is, not, is not the best. It's not. I'll admit it, but it does. But I will still compete because yeah, the breed. It's for the dogs. The dog doesn't know if he wins at the end of the day. He's you know, it's for him to have fun yeah. and um and for me as a competitor and the dogs compete. You know, it's, it's a good thing for the breed. Um, I think a big problem with the breed is people breeding them only for looks, without regard to athleticism, and um, you start to get dogs that aren't. American Pitbull Terrier. Yeah. yeah. We, we have similar view here in Brazil. We are doing some uh, kind of even, uh, shows with sports, you know, yeah. with the, uh, the points together. So the dog uh, must be champion in both uh, competitions, show and sports. Uh, because here is the same. Some people go only to the show, other only on the sport. Yeah. But we, we don't have a mix of that, you know? Yes, it's a, it's a problem, and hopefully in time we can get more people to, to, to do both. And um, one thing I'll say is confirmation is important to athletic performance. Um, it's even more important to a dog's durability and longevity. A dog that's properly built will be able to work into their older age without sustaining injuries. So, um, you know. That's, that's another thing where confirmation is important. But if the dog's heart and soul isn't there, they don't have the willingness inside to work, 
you can't judge that in the confirmation ring. Yeah, yeah. Let's go to the third. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's talk about the bloodlines. We we in Brazil we don't have uh, so many material yep. uh, that you have uh, in your USA. What do you think about the bloodlines? Do you have any preference, and why is that? So, okay, for me, I do not place as much importance on the bloodline as most people do. Um, I evaluate each dog as an individual. Not as Jeep dogs, not as Eli dogs. It's just a dog. Every bloodline produces good, bad, and many that are in between. So for me, what's more important than the bloodline is the man or woman who did the breeding, who is breeding the dogs. Because their breeding decisions and what they select for or fail to select for will ultimately determine the quality of the dog. Um, so, you know, pedigrees are a useful tool that many people um, do not have the knowledge to utilize effectively. Um, they don't know the strengths and weaknesses of those dogs and on that piece of paper. They only know the names, which doesn't do much for you when you're really trying to breed a, a consistent family of dogs. Um, you know, I think a small-scale breeder who really knows his dogs intimately is much better off and has higher percentages than a, than a breeder who, who produces, you know, mass amounts of dogs because yes, yeah, sure. You'll get some good dogs, but I think you have lower percentages on the whole. So, um, that's my take on bloodlines. With that being said, um, I've kind of, my, my personal line has kind of fallen into the Ronald Boyle's dirty Mary type bred dogs. Um, they seem to be the kind of dogs that I like the best in terms of speed and athleticism and intelligence and, and things that I look for. But um, I'm a fan of any good dog, and I don't care what the bloodline is if it's good. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we, we think the same here. <laughs> we think the same. Uh, Andy, let's go to the, the fourth question. It's about the future of American Pit Bull Terrier. What do you think about that Um uh, because we, we talk about alternative sports, yeah. uh, about shows, and what do you think it's going to happen? Because uh, we are in a transi transition time. Uh, traditional sport forbidden, uh, many alternative sports, shows. What do you think it's going to happen? Well, um, I believe that the American pit bull terror in its heritage form um, – is an endangered species, and I've said that before. Some of you might have remembered me saying that. Um, but on the other hand, I think that the breed, um, as most people know, it will continue to thrive. Um, you know, like you said, their original purpose has been outlawed, so the breed and their fanciers have been forced to adapt, and um, that's where sport and, and other things have, have come into play. And I don't think that there's a more adaptable dog in the world than the American Pit Bull Terrier. They can, they can do anything, um, you know, that they put their mind to. So um, I think that we're at an interesting point in the history of the breed where that they're, they're, they're as popular as they've ever been. There's, there's more Pit Bull and Pit Bull type dogs everywhere. Um, I've seen such, a, such an increase in quality in Europe. And, and the dogs I've judged in Europe, uh, it's, it's been amazing over the last five years to see how, how the breeds improved. Um, so they're, they're loved and they're hated, you know. So it, 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 it really comes – and they're misunderstood. So it comes, comes down to us. The, their future is in our hands. And I think it's positive as long as we, as breeders and, and fanciers of the, the American Pit Bull Terrier, continue to maintain the traits of old – while focusing on the future and what's going to, you know, propel mm -hmm. us into the, you know, next generation, the world's adapting and we must too. Yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. Andy, we, we're going to open to some questions. Okay. Sure. Uh, I saw a question from a, a friend of us that are asking about protection sports. Okay. Uh, I don't know what you, uh, what's the name that you use 
But uh, do you do you know protection sports? Sure, sure, sure. We we do some of we do a lot of that here. Personally, um, I've only done it for fun. Um, but I think it I think it's great. I think it's I think I I don't know that the American pit bull terrier is the best dog for protection sports, but they can certainly um, do do it and do it very well. I've seen them um, do Schutzen and IPO and French ring trials and, and, and do great at it. But, um, you know, it's not their natural tendency to, to bite people. Um, so it, for the yeah. pit bull, it seems to be more of a, a game and a game that they're very good at if they have the right handler and um, trainer. Yeah, and we have some friends in USA that do. Uh, I think uh, Clay from No Fear. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. He do a great job yeah. with that. Uh, and here in Brazil, we have some some people doing, mm -hmm. and they are doing great. I, I agree with you. It's not the the best best type of dog, but as you said, uh, pit bull is the the most adaptable adaptable yeah. dog. They you know, are. they are. Yeah, you know, and he he is going to do well. Wait a minute, let's let's see another question. Sure. Well, another question. Here in Brazil, we start the alternative sports, your top dog, about 15, 20 years ago. Oh, wow. Did you know that? Oh. Did, did you did you did you know about Brazilian sports? No, I, any notice of that? I did not know. Um I know that Hank Greenwood from the ADBA, the president. He was introduced to a lot of the, the events, the sporting top dog events. Um, at a show, I believe he judged in Mexico. So they might have taken some of the, the Brazilian sports and, and they made their way to the United States and now Europe. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do another one. Condicionamento, se ele tem alguma... Não sei se é uma coisa de condicionamento. Mais uma pergunta, não? Ah, ele tem algumas pessoas que estão fazendo a mesma pergunta. Sobre? O que a gente já perguntou de, de sobre games, esportes mantém essa característica. Ok, uh, a question that we, we, we are always uh, seeing here in Brazil, it's about the, the gameness, mm -hmm. the, the, the people gameness. Mm -hmm. How to preserve that without the traditional sport? Yeah. Do, do you think is there any way to do that? I think it, I think it's difficult, but um, I don't think it's impossible. I think, um, well, f for one, you need to have witnessed gameness in its true form to be able to recognize it um, in in a different capacity. Um, I think there's different degrees and levels to gameness, um, and I think the different circumstances will. I've seen I've seen some crazy things over the years in different circumstances. A dog that you think is super 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 deep game, in a different circumstance, turns out to not be. So you scratch your head a little bit. But I think I think first of all you need to have witnessed it and know what you're looking for. And second of all, I think that through sports um, and even through um, you know just hard work. Um, you can you can you can get a, a decent gauge of how game your dog is. Um, the first the, the the biggest thing that will show you if your dog is game or not is the heat and when they're tired. How do they yeah. act? You know. We see lots of dogs on hunting. Okay. You know, heavy hunting like, like with pigs. Yeah. Uh, uh, in Brazil, we 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 have a lot lots of dogs doing hunting. Uh, do, do you know it's a kind of of way to to see that? Yeah, to a certain extent. Um, but um, you know, it, it, nothing. I don't think there's anything that's ever going to replace. You know, the original. Yeah. Original. It's a, a different different kind a of different kind. yeah. But in this day and age, you know. Um, we have to adapt, and the dogs will too. And um, you know, we just have to do our best. Yeah. And the, another question about uh, food: Do do you use natural food with your dogs? Yes, sir. Right. Yeah. Cook every day. 
uh, raw, but I prepare it every day. Yes. Ah, oh, okay, okay, um, okay. For me, I had um, fed kibble for maybe fifteen years. In one day, a bad kibble, and the three dogs die, or no, two dogs die, one very sick. I changed all all raw, and um, I, I really believe in it. I think um, if you can, if it works with your schedule, um, your lifestyle, if you can make it changes, it, it, it's a it, you'll see a very big difference. Um, not only in the dog, you know, also in how long they live and how healthy they are and everything like that. Nutrition is very important, not only for the dog, but I mean, as a as a mixed martial yeah. artist, I'm sure you know nutrition is very important to performance and health. Okay, uh, Andy, another question um, uh, about the behavior of the dogs. In the ADBA ring, okay. uh, what do you think? Do you think you can see uh, the dog temperament in the in the ring? To a certain extent, you can. Um, you know, that's a, it's tough because in the you want the American pit bull terrier. It's natural for them to be dog aggressive in the ring. You you, you try not to hold it against them. But sometimes if they get too crazy, it's hard to judge them because you can't see how they're built. Um, but from the public's perspective, to see pit bulls in the show ring barking and acting crazy is not very good. You know, they, they don't understand it. They don't understand what they're seeing. So it's hard. It, mm -hmm. it's, a difficult, it's a difficult question to, uh, to answer because I don't think there's a – Right or wrong answer to it. Yeah, because because bark is not uh, is not meaning that the dog is nothing. Has good temperament. Yeah, nothing. I've seen it's, many dogs that don't bark that are great dogs. Um, but yeah. when the dog is barking, usually they're flexing their muscles, so they look they look uh, you know very uh, full and in shape. They look better when they have when they're tense. So, from that perspective, I understand people wanting their dogs to kind of get excited. Okay. So, in the ring, that uh, position to put one one in front of other to see the temperament is a usual thing. It's usual, but I don't believe that judges are doing it to see the temperament. I think that's a misconception that the public has. I think. What the judges are doing in most cases are selecting out of the group their top oh, okay. two or three, and sometimes four. Comparing, comparing yes, them. Yes, pulling them out, letting everyone watching the show know that these are my top dogs from the class, and um, then they start to compare the dog, but not the dogs to each other, but to the to the written standard. They're comparing it, which dog matches the standard better. Um, but I believe they're just pulling the dogs out to separate them from the rest of the class. Okay, so you you could do the the best in show for a shy dog. You know, a uh, a dog is not if if the confirmation is perfect. Uh, a shy dog? No, that that uh, an American pit bull terrier should not be shy. They should be confident. Um, They don't have to bark and they don't have to be mean, but they have to be confident in their surroundings. So um, you don't want their tail tucked between their legs. You don't want them, you know, cowering and, and being afraid. But they certainly do not have to bark in order to win a best in show. As long as they're confident um, and, and in control of their space, that's all that matters. Okay. Mais alguma coisa ou não? Ah, as pessoas estão dizendo alguma coisa. As pessoas estão me traduzir. Eu vou terminar com você, só para não ficar muito longo, ok? Então eu traduzo para todos. Ok. Bem, well, Andy, eu gostaria de te agradecer muito. Peraí, eu estou dizendo que você vai jogar no Brasil. Oh, as pessoas estão perguntando se você aceitaria um convite para vir aqui no Brasil para julgar um show. 
And no our dogs. That would be a pleasure and an honor. Um, I visited South oh, America great. one time. I loved it. So uh, I'm ready. Okay. We will see that, okay? Okay. Thank you, guys. <laughs> and the, very, uh, thank you very much for everything. We will go upload in YouTube uh, later this video. And uh, all the people are very uh, pleased with your your presence here. It's the first time we interview uh, an American breeder with your uh, importance, you know. It's an honor for us, okay? It's been a real pleasure. I really thank you guys so much for this opportunity. Thank you and congratulations for your work, your work. The Lushu puppies are very nice. I will send you pictures uh, as soon as possible, okay? Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.